Hey everyone, today I want to take you on a tour of the awesome Web 2.0 Tool Class Dojo. Some of you may have heard about it before. I didn't learn about it until last summer during a technology PD that I attended. And I definitely regret not using this the entire year. I started using it towards the end of the year, but I will definitely be using it for the entire year with my upcoming class. To start off our tour, I have us on the classdojo.com homepage. This is where you're going to find all the information that you need to know about Class Dojo, how it works, and all the explanations for your students and your parents. This is also where you're going to sign up if you do not have an account, or if you do have an account where you do log in. I have pulled down the login box in this corner, and as you can see, you can log in as a student, parent, or teacher. And obviously, we are going to be logging in as teachers. Now, because I'm on my iPad, I get this screen that says I can download the app for my iPad. I do have the app downloaded, and I have used it in my classroom, but I tend to find that keeping the Class Dojo up on my computer works a lot easier. I have had little technical issues of the iPad syncing with the computer incorrectly and losing some points. Um, it doesn't do it all the time. I think they've kind of fixed the bugs. But for me, it's just easier to keep it up on my computer. So I usually skip this screen on my iPad and go right to the actual site, which you're going to see next. This is what the login screen will look like when you are on the actual Classroom Dojo website. Here you're going to enter in your email and your password and click login as a teacher. It's simple as that. When I log into my Classroom Dojo, this is exactly what I see. I have my first grade class set up from this year. If I wanted to create a new class, I go right up to the green Create button and you click the button. I'm going to show you how to create a class because I'm going to need a brand new class for my second grade next year. Once you click the green button to create a class, a pop-up menu will come up that looks exactly like this. You are going to use the drop-down menus to choose your grade level and what class you teach specifically. Because I'm only in second grade, I am general education, but if you are in middle school or high school, you can choose your class specifically, like language, arts, writing, math, whatever you teach. Then you simply name your class and you click Create Class. Once you've created your class, this is the most time-consuming part adding the names of your students. You need to start by clicking on the copy paste a list button. When you do that, this window pops open where you can write in your student names separated by lines. Once you have them all typed in, you simply click add students and you're ready to go. Like I said, this is the most time consuming part. The rest is so simple. Now a brand new feature that I had not known about until I looked closer is that you can join your entire school on the Classroom Dojo network. You can simply type in the name of your school and click search. Now because this part is all new to me, I decided to do a search for my own school and up popped Hoover Elementary even with a map to show exactly where we're located. From here all you do is click add school and you're ready to go. Once you add your school, the cool part is, is you have the option to invite other teachers from your school to join you on the Classroom Dojo network. Once you created your page, it shows up on your login each time. This is the class that I had created for this year. This is the one that I just made for next year. To start it up, all I need to do is press that start button. Once you click start, you're going to see your entire class show up as avatars. There are a lot of different links at the top. There are a link to change the settings, to enter in attendance, to put up a timer if you're doing an activity with your students. You can award points randomly. You can also award points to multiple students at a time. If you click on award multiple students, it just lets you select more than one student to give the same point to. If you would like to reset your entire class, you simply click Reset Bubbles. 
This part of the tour is showing you what happens when you click on a student. I clicked on Allison and up pops this box. Right now it's showing you the positive feedback that you can give a student. Now this is just the generic positive feedback that happened to be in there. I did change mine for my first grade class to better fit the needs of my students and I'm going to show you how to do that also. When you click on the negative side of the box over here, you will see that there are some generic negative feedback, like disrespect, no homework, off task, or unprepared. Again, they're easily changed to fit the needs of your classroom. Now this slide shows you what happens when you give a student positive feedback. I gave Allison positive feedback for teamwork, and up pops this box at the bottom, and it makes a little ping noise to announce to the class that somebody earned a point. Now when you use the negative feedback, there's a different sound, kind of a bong, and it lets everyone know, oh no, somebody just lost a point. If you want to edit your positive and negative feedback, I'll show you how to do that next, but first you have to click End Class. When you end your class, you come to the awesome part of Classroom Dojo, the data screen. Right now, this data doesn't look like much because it's a brand new class and I've only awarded one point. But as you award and deduct points from your students, this pie chart will change and it will continuously change over a week, a month, however long you want to collect data. It's going to show trends in the behaviors of your students. Now, if you want to change the positive and negative feedback for your students, you simply need to go to this little link up here that says Edit Class. When you're in classroom edit mode, you can change a lot about your classroom setup. Basic information is just that, changing the basic outline of your class. When you click on students, you can change their avatars. You can also add and delete students. Right now, we are in customized behaviors, and we are looking at the positive feedback. Now this is a screenshot of my first grade class. I changed the positive feedback to better fit the needs of my students. I added being a great friend, I gave out points for daily five and showing great reading skills, also great ideas, hard work, great work in math, scientific thinking, using time wisely, and wonderful writing. This button is going to be your best friend when you want to add a behavior. You simply click add your own, type in what you want it to say, choose a picture, and save it. It's as simple as that. One other part of this page is the import behaviors from other classes. I think this is going to be my best friend for this year because I can take what's on this screen right now and put it in my new second grade class. I'm now showing you the negative behaviors that I customized for my first grade students. I tried to make them a little bit more specific. I added being disrespectful to Miss Morgan, being a mean friend, hands on friends, not listening, not using your time wisely, and talking out. And again, you can add your own to make it fit your needs and also transfer it to other classes. Right now you're looking at the student section of our edit screen. This is where you add students, take off students, and change their avatars. This drop down menu has two choices, monsters and critters. When I set up my first grade classroom, I set them all up as critters and I told them that when they earned 10 points, they could choose their own monster. Now they were beyond excited. They got to come up to my computer and pick their own avatar and it really motivated them to earn more points. When you save your information in your edit screen, you jump back to your data screen. In this data screen, you're going to find a lot of useful tools for your classroom. The first one we're going to look at is the print feature. Once you click the print button, you're going to see this box pop up where you can download reports for each of your students. You can select all of your students or just some of the students who are having behavior problems and you can give the reports to their parents. I didn't really utilize this enough towards the end of the year, but when I start off my brand new class, I'm going to be using this a lot. Moving back to our data screen, if you click on the Parent Accounts tab at the top, you will notice that you can invite parents by typing their emails in below, or you can print codes for your parents to log in on their own. 
I definitely didn't utilize this enough at the end of the year with my students and parents, but I'm going to be using it in my classroom this year. It's a great way for the parents to keep tabs on their students' progress and behavior, and it's a very easy way for me to communicate with all of my parents and keep them up to date on their students' progress. Right below parent accounts, you will notice that there are student accounts. In the student logins, you can give them a code just like the parents. You can give them a handout with their code to log in when they get home. They can design their own avatars and they can even track their progress at home. It's very engaging for the students. I hope you like this tour and I hope I gave you some insight into what Class Dojo can do for your students. I know Classroom Dojo changed my room towards the end of the year and I can't wait to see what it does when I use it for an entire year. The best part of Classroom Dojo is that you're giving instant feedback to your students. Whether it's positive or negative, they are going to make a change because they are working together to earn points. I added some own rewards for my students. When they got to 10 points, they could change their avatar to a monster. And when the entire class each got to 20 points, we had a class ice cream party. My students were so engaged and excited to use Classroom Dojo that I can't imagine not using it in my classroom. I hope that after this tour, you at least give it a try in your own classroom.